Welcome everyone to the Mazda Bongo Friendy Auto Free Top. Now by the end of this video, you're going to learn everything about this van. And if you've already seen the thumbnail, you know what's coming. So right off the bat, what are we looking at here? This is a Mazda Bongo. It is a Japanese exclusive model that we never got here in the United States. Taking a quick glance through the window here, you'll see it's right-hand drive. So with that being said, this one's been imported over to the US by my friends at Southeast Imports, and I've got the chance to review it. Now the Bongos were super popular vans over in Japan because of their overall size, but their roads are super narrow. So you can see the profile of the back of the van here is super narrow, but it's also very tall, which allows for a lot of headroom. Now these were also incredibly popular because of the options you could get. For instance, if we take a look under here, you'll find it has a rear differential to it. This one is all wheel drive. The bongos are actually mid engine. Let's take a look under the hood and you'll see what I mean. Not a whole lot to look at up here other than the cowl, some batteries. There are two batteries and that's because this thing has a lot of accessories that we'll get to. The brake booster and a couple of other easy access parts. But the coolest parts are inside where all the fun stuff is. Let's take a quick look around the driver's seating area. You've got two seats up here. It's not a bench. Going back to the fact that this thing is pretty tall, you actually have a step to get up in here as well as a handle up here. So now that we're inside, there's a few switches. The first of which is the mirror switches. This one does have the electric mirrors and you can fold them in. To the left of the steering wheel on the dash, you have very basic AC controls here, and this one's been outfitted with an aftermarket double-din screen. You've got a nice glove box down here that's got some decent room, it's super deep, but again, nothing too special. Now, in order to show you most of the cool stuff, I'm gonna need to turn this on. Now, it's these buttons here that are some of my favorites. Watch the back windows. It's got automatic shades. And this is something that not even 1% of homes in North America have. Watch how crazy this looks. All at the same time, it's so uniform. Now for the cool part, the auto free top. To activate it, the car must be running, the car must be in park, and the car must have the parking brake engaged. Hi everyone, you're now outside of the car. So what I'm gonna do is operate the top. It takes just a second, but you'll get the idea. I just have to push this switch here and you will see, rather you hold the switch down and this thing annoyingly beeps at you nonstop until it goes up all the way. So you at least have an indicator as to when this thing's going all the way up. Still going, still going. Uh, it takes a minute. We're almost there. Almost there, still beeping, there it goes. Ta-da, that only took 12 years. Now, of course, this is going to remind a lot of people of the old Westfalia buses that did the exact same thing, except theirs was not automatic to my knowledge. Regardless, the height of this thing has effectively nearly doubled. Here's a better look at the side profile, the wedge up here so you can sleep. Let's take a look at it. Let's get in the back. Oh, wait, one more thing. Soft closed doors, how cool is that? Okay, now we're getting inside. Right off the bat, this is a super nice place to be, but we got a lot to talk about the seats, so I'm just gonna get us started by going up into the abyss. First, I'm gonna take off my shoes, cause you gotta stand up here. And here we go up into the roof. Now, of course it's pretty dark in here, but you can flip these up to reveal some Velcro tabs. And you just pop them on up here. So I'll hop up here so you get a reference of how big this is. And then you just close this up. Now look at this. So I'm 6'2", and this is me with my head up against the back wall. Hello everyone, this is me. There's not too much up here, it's just a flat floor and that's about all you get. You're really supposed to bring like a really thin air mattress or something to lay down. Down we go, back into the main cabin. While this is here, I'll go ahead and shut us in. All right, shoes back on. Now we can talk about the rest of the seating arrangement in here, and it's super cool and very unique. First off, I believe a few of these chairs had the ability to swivel. That has something to do with this. I just use them for a foot rest, but do what you want. Both sides here do have those foot rests. 
Now the passenger that sits behind the driver has access to all of the air conditioning controls and there's quite a few adjustments like your heat and everything so you can truly adjust everything yourself. And this switch here controls the curtains individually. So this one has one, that one, and the other ones. And just like in a lot of minivans from this era, all of the vents are going to be on this central system right here and everybody just points the vent towards them. But now onto my favorite part, which is the seats. They do a lot of things and I'm just gonna go through every single one of them. We got levers today. So if you don't like the word lever, just get used to it. If you pull this lever, you can then take the seat back and fold it down, revealing a tray table with two cup holders. Now, I get a lot of flack for calling these cup holders, but that's what they are. If you're sitting stationary, the car doesn't have to be moving. That's where you're supposed to put your cups. And the other side does it too, so you can have a completely flat area, have yourself a nice picnic in the comfortable back seat with a very large table. You could even play games. And this table exists here because I believe Flipping those chairs around would allow people to sit front and back and play games and stuff right here. But let's put these back and move on to the next part. The middle seat has a lever sitting here in the middle and when you pull that, the whole thing slides up. And not only does it do that, it also plays a pivotal part as to what we're going to do with the back seat here in just a second. Again, this lever coming in handy when you wanna get back there easily. And of course you've got more of the same. Again, the central lever, you pull that and then it comes up into position there. And while the seat back doesn't fully come forward like the middle one does, it doesn't really need to since it's in the very back. However, if we pull the lever down here with the seat in its most forward position, you have the ability to fold down the seat backs. The entirety of the back seat area turns into a bed and it's actually pretty decently comfortable given the fact that you have seat belts, armrests, and headrests in here. For best results, you definitely wanna have a air mattress of some sort, just like you would up top. Here we are, I've got my feet off of the cushions and I've got plenty of room back here. This is actually comfortable for sleeping two full-size adults. There's one last weird feature in the back. Make that two weird features. I bet a lot of you are wondering what this is. This is a backup mirror. Look through here at the mirror. As the driver, you come back, it reflects down, and you can see the back of the bumper with a little bit of area leading up to like a curb or a parked car, so it allows you to see exactly what's behind you. I call this the analog backup camera. But onto that other thing. Let's get in the back. And right here, this is very common to see, this is a mod that somebody put in where it's essentially a household outlet that runs back here. Part of the reason why you have multiple batteries up in the front of this thing. But now it's time to put that tent down. Here's how you do it. You actually have to get back up in here and manually hit the unlock button on the roof. As you can very annoyingly hear, this thing does still beep at you and it lets you know that it's going down. It stops midway and you have to start it again. That's of course a safety feature ensuring that nobody's up top when you're putting it down. Now let's take this thing out on the road and see how it drives. Spoiler alert, it drives like a minivan. All right, driving the Mazda Bongo Friendy Auto Free Top. Now, I failed to mention earlier that these came with several different engine variations as well as transmissions. You could actually get these with a, either an automatic or a manual transmission. This one's automatic. The dealership that I got this from also has a manual one. Driving this thing around, it's a little strange because, you know, if you're used to driving K trucks and K vans, it's just like that, but it's on a bigger scale. Like what I mean by that is it's so tall and so narrow that you do a lot of this as you go around the corners. Like, let's see if we can take a look outside. Mm. Just taking corners in this thing at speed is definitely an adventure in and of itself. Acceleration, I believe this is a three speed automatic transmission. Uh, you're gonna hit 60 and that's about it. I'm sitting currently at 60 kilometers an hour and it just went into overdrive and I'm doing just 1500 RPMs. Really, really nice. That's about 40 miles an hour or so. It's a really good transmission for it being an automatic. 
driving it around town. It, it's just a minivan. It's a standard minivan. No nothing. You can hardly hear the diesel engine, which sits right here next to where my arm is right here. And it, it just sounds normal, fine, a little bit of engine noise, but nothing crazy. And they are really just smooth, daily driver capable cars. I think this one, let's see, 316,000 kilometers. Looks pretty good for its age. So if we're converting that, that's a little over 200,000 miles, I'm pretty sure, just on the fly. Now, when you're sitting here idling, everything does shake a little bit because again, it's a diesel. But hey, if that's my only gripe about this thing, there's really not much to complain about. It's a super solid van. Well, everyone, that's gonna do it for this video on the Mazda Bongo Friendy Auto Free Top. These quirky little things really are some of my absolute favorite vans. And if you like content like this, feel free to subscribe. I do show off quite a few really unique random cars. Also, let me know down in the comments what car I should review next. In the meantime, guys, take care. We'll see you in the next one. Later.